Can you do me a favor and turn to your neighbor and say, I am open. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I am willing. You know, today, if you're new here, if you're new here, I won't be before you long. If you're a regular here, you know that's a lie. But today I stand before you to let you know what the Bible is and what the Bible is not. For me, and for the context of using it at Glide Memorial Church, it has to be a sacred text that does no harm, first of all. And so I want to let you know that the Bible, if it's been interpreted this way, it is not God's wrath, it is not God's condemnation, nor is it a statement about homogeneity, inequality, exclusion, marginalization, or injustice. The only way that a sacred text, or the Bible in this case, can be of use to us as a practical theology, as a roadmap, as a public theology, or a trans theology, or a theology of peace, or a theology of unconditional love, is to know that the Bible is actually God's diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and justice statement. The Bible is a witness to the sacred narratives of our lives. Our gathering today, yes, is underpinned by the gratitude for all the privileges that we have and hold, but this celebration is also a remembrance, a testament to our shared humanity. We converge here today in this sanctuary and celebration where our extended families around the world are just fighting to be, to be, to be loved, to be safe, to be home, to be free, to be human. So on this Transgender Day of Remembrance, we not only mourn the lives locally, nationally, or globally that we've lost, but we celebrate the lives, struggle, and triumphs of our transgender siblings. Their existence, their ontology, their very being challenges and enriches our understanding of how the divine creation is and how it works. Now, ontology is one of four words I have left over from my seminary days. And our ontology, I have to say it with, with authority, our ontology, our very being, in its simplest forms is about understanding the essence of our being. It's like asking ourselves what makes us who we are. And in the context of our faith and the teachings of liberation, it's about understanding how God has created and intended each part of God's creation. Genesis 1, 27, so God created humankind. That's all of us, y'all. God created humankind in God's image. God looks like y'all, y'all know that, right? God created them, male and female, God created them. Don't miss out on that pronoun. God created them. And while this verse is often interpreted through a binary frame, I think it invites us to explore a more expansive view of God. The Bible is God's diversity, equity, inclusion, diversity, and justice statement. The image of God, the imago Dei. So God created humankind in God's image. That's bigger than any binary that we know. It's bigger than black or white, bigger than rich or poor, young or old, blue or white collar, student or teacher, red state or blue state, housed or unhoused, urban or rural, liberal or conservative, religious or secular, educated or uneducated, married or single, child or adult, public sector or private sector, vegetarian and non-vegetarian, East Coast or West Coast. God is bigger than the binary. God's diversity extends far beyond any definition and celebrates every hue of our human existence. Being made in God's image isn't about physical appearance, isn't about what you did, what you smoked, what you went through, what you stole, what you missed out on. It's about the essence of who God is reflected in us. If you went through it, and you're in the image of God, then God went through it too. It's about our ability to love, 
to create and to reason, to seek justice, to show mercy. These are the divine qualities that we all share. In this sacred space, we ask, but who gets to be? Who is granted the grace of existence? And by what authority are some of us regulated to the margins? And in the heart of the gospel, in the heart of the Bible, God's diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and justice statement, we find a radical inclusion, an invitation for all of us to exist freely, wholly, without fear, or favor, or shame, or blame, or secrecy. And today, we need to remember that transgender individuals, like all of God's children, have the divine right to be. Their stories, their journeys are sacred text, teaching us the resilience of the human spirit and the boundless nature of God's love. But who are you? Beyond the surface, beneath the layers of societal norms, who are you? In this house of God, you are a holy scripture. In this house of God, your tears are a prayer. In this house of God, your laughter is a hymn. Here we honor the ontology of existence, the sacred right to be oneself in all of your complexity, but in all of your beauty too. And to my transgender brothers, sisters, and non-binary kin, I say, you are the embodiment of God's creative genius. Your existence is not up for debate. It is a celebration of the diversity of God's creation. You teach us that the image of God is vast, encompassing a spectrum of identities and expressions. You are the Imago Dei, and you are the Imago Gay. <laughs> On this day of remembrance, let our gratitude for life intertwine with our resolve for justice. Let us remember those we have lost to ignorance and hate and let their memories galvanize us towards a world where every individual can live authentically and safely. We belong to one another, y'all. Not just in words, but in actions. In the way we stand up for each other, in the way we dismantle the structures that seek to invalidate the existence of our transgender siblings, we are called to be allies, advocates, and amplifiers of voices that society is trying to silence. So we ask that our, that our existence, that we understand that each person, including our transgender siblings, is a marvelous creation of God. Psalm 139.14, I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and wonderful are your works that I know very well. And here's the thing, if we are confronted with a world where the existence and rights of transgender individuals are often questioned and denied, then the challenge before us is not to affirm and validate their existence, but to actively participate in dismantling structures that, that perpetuate discrimination and violence against them. Our faith calls us not to be passive acceptance, but active love and justice seekers. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for we are all one in Christ. And the only way that I can be a part of this Christian movement, this radical Christianity, this radical faith walk that I am on, it's because I know that in this, we find unity that transcends all earthly labels and divisions, affirming the equality and the value of every individual. And if the Bible is a diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging and justice statement, and we are made in the image of God, then we are the Imago Dei. We are the Imago Gay. We are the Imago He. We are the Imago Him. We are the Imago She, we are the Imago Her, we are the Imago They, we are the Imago Them, and we are the Imago Zay. The essence of being in God's creation, our ontology, the uniqueness of our being, 
the purpose of our being and the interconnectedness of all creation means that ontology isn't just about an individual existence or essence. It's about how these essences are all interconnected. In a world that God envisions, no one exists in isolation. Our lives, our struggles, and our joys are indeed interconnected. The liberation of one is tied to the liberation of all of us. Now, here's the thing. I was in the Googles, and I was looking for God's diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and justice statement. And I found it on God's website. I'd like to read it. I, the eternal creator, the eternal co-creator, affirm my unwavering commitment to all of creation. My divine essence is mirrored in the boundless variety of humanity, with each person being a unique reflection of my image, integral to my creation. I cherish, God says, every soul, every story, every identity, having fashioned humans in a spectrum of colors and cultures and genders and experiences, deliberately expressing my love and creativity. This diversity, God says, and God's diversity statement is a testament to the rich imagination through which my image is being fully realized. And as the architect of all existence, I call upon my children, that's us, to build a world reflecting the kingdom of heaven here on earth where all transcends earthly divisions are united as one. The statement goes on to say, my teachings exemplified in Christ guide us to create a world where every voice is heard and every life is valued. The charge for a world that reflects my love includes educating and understanding the splendid variety within my creation advocating and acting as beacons of justice and equity, embracing and celebrating through creating sanctuaries of unconditional love and unconditional acceptance and praying and supporting each other in our shared journey of faith and love. The diversity is not just a facet of your world, but a testament to my immeasurable creativity. It is a divine challenge to educate and understand by seeking wisdom and insight into the splendid variety within my creation, it says. It is a divine challenge to advocate and act, stand as beacons of justice and equity to one another. It is a divine challenge to embrace and celebrate and create sanctuaries upon sanctuaries of unconditional acceptance. It is a divine challenge to pray and support and keep each of my children in your prayers. It goes on in the chorus of diverse voices, experiences, and identities. God says, find the fullness of my love. Embrace this diversity. Strive for equity and justice and walk together in the light of my inclusive love. And it finishes by saying, I am, and this is all on God's website. <laughs> I am with you in this journey guiding, loving, and rejoicing in the magnificent diversity of my creation as we build together a world that reflects the depth and breadth of my love of you. As we reflect on the message of gratitude and remembrance, let us be grateful for the beautiful diversity of God's creation. Let us remember that there is in the trans community who have been lost to hate and ignorance a possibility of love and let us extend through trans people those around the, and those around the world who have been lost to hate and ignorance a peace beyond our understanding. And in their memory, let us renew our commitment to a world where every person is free to be who they are. A world that reflects the boundless, yes. Let's go ahead and build this world that reflects the boundless love and creativity of our creator. Can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah. Amen and amen. Yeah.